Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Monday, September 15. The legal and regulatory changes to develop Jamaica's venture capital industry should be implemented during the next fiscal year. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips made the disclosure last week during the second annual Venture Capital Conference hosted by the Development Bank of Jamaica. He said a panel of investors was organized to provide expert advice and a toolkit was being developed by legal advisors which will provide access for all stakeholders to the standardized documents and the guidance as to the international best practices to be followed in undertaking venture capital transactions. The Jamaica Venture Capital Fund will provide equity financing to small and medium-sized enterprises so they can grow and develop. The second annual Venture Capital Conference was held under the theme Towards a Dynamic Ecosystem, Linking Capital, Innovation and Entrepreneurship for Growth. Government is moving to strengthen the country's forensic capabilities through a merger of the Forensic Laboratory and the Legal Medicine Unit. They will form the Institute of Forensic Science. National Security Minister Peter Bunting said the Institute, which should be finalized in the next fiscal year, would report to his ministry. We think it's not just important for it to be an independent investigative uh, institute, but also that it be perceived as that and that the influence of the uh, GACF will not be any greater than any of its other stakeholders. Minister Bunting was speaking at the official handing over of ballistics comparison microscopes and DNA kits to the forensic laboratory by the United States Embassy. He said the equipment will help to strengthen the capacity of law enforcers to effectively fight crime. JCF personnel who are assigned to the laboratory will also be able to take up secondments at the institute with the option of becoming full-time staff or returning to the police force. Students of Salt Savannah Primary and Infant School in Southeast Clarendon are the first to receive tablet computers under the Tablets in Schools pilot project. During the distribution process, parents and guardians had to sign an agreement which outlined how the devices should be handled. Technology Minister Philip Powell said the teachers and caregivers should monitor the children as they use the tablets. So you have to monitor at home, as the teachers will do here, what your child does. We are going to try to make sure that there are certain sites, there will be certain information that is not appropriate, that is not suitable for children and that we will filter out. In the meantime, Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites said the Tablets in Schools pilot project should improve the literacy and numeracy skills of students. Under the program, 38 educational institutions will receive 25,000 tablets to aid the teaching learning experience. Jamaicans are being encouraged to participate in projects this Saturday, September 20, as the country marks International Coastal Cleanup Day. Close to 140 coastal areas have been registered for cleaning with the Jamaica Environment Trust JET, which is coordinating the day's activities with support from several organizations, including the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The main project will be the cleaning of Fort Rocky on the Palisades Strip in Kingston. The Urban Development Corporation and the National Environment and the Planning Agency are also spearheading the removal of debris from the Helsher Beach in St. Catherine. We're inviting everyone to come out because we recognize that this may be the only way we can teach the public about why it's very important to dispose of their garbage properly. Um, improper disposal of garbage cause our wildlife to die. Persons wishing to participate in International Coastal Cleanup Day can register at jamentrust.org. And finally, thousands of mourners flocked the St. George's Church in Savlamar, Westmoreland on the weekend to pay their final respects to the late Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Roger Clark. Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and Opposition Leader Andrew Holness were among a wide cross-section of persons who attended the ceremony. The official funeral began with several moving tributes. A man with an undying love for Jamaica, champion farmer, special person, an example to politicians, a giant of a man, an affable leader, a gentle giant, a colorful politician, a man for all seasons, a phenomenal Jamaican patriot. 
the cabinet has lost the wisdom of one who fully understood the psyche of the common man. And so we remember him today as one who found the common denominator of patriotism that can bind us all, irrespective of green and orange, of age, gender, or color of skin. Roger Clark, as far as I am concerned, was the manifestation of what we mean by brand Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica was reflected in all of the style and content of Roger Clark's life. His generosity of spirit is legendary. Roger Clark, who passed away on August 28 in Florida, was laid to rest in Glen Isley, Williamsville, Westmoreland. He was 74 years old. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching.